Okay, so in this part of the video, we are going to be looking at um, not specifically widgets, but we're going to be looking at the logged in widget. Uh, and also we're going to be creating a widget that allows us to uh, tell um, anyone that's visiting the site how many users are currently registered on the website. And this won't include users that are inactive. So any users that have an inactive account will not be included because we could have you know, several registrations that don't, um, that haven't been activated, therefore, we, you know, we don't want to include them in the check. Uh, but we're going to look at uh, just building up some of the links inside loggedin.php, um, and this will form the, the overall navigation for our user. So anywhere that they want to go, whether it's to change settings, like their password, log out, anything like that, uh, check uh, private messages, um, we'll, we'll go in here. So let's do that quickly now because it's relatively straightforward. It's just, uh, well, it's very straightforward. It's uh, just a uh, an unordered list with some list uh, items within it. So I'll go ahead and just do, we're only doing two for now, one of which uh, we haven't created, which will be the change password um, page, which we'll do, um, you know, we'll get to, when we get to it. Um, the first one is going to be uh, to log out. Now you'll remember we've already actually created the logout um, log code or the logout file. Um, it basically just consists of starting a session, destroying, and then redirecting back to uh, the index page. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go ahead and create a, an anchor tag. So essentially a link, and I'll just here say log out or space will do. Uh, and we're just linking to logout.php, and that's it really. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and refresh. Oh, I'm not logged in. Let me just log myself in. There we go. So I've got this logout link, and when I click on it, I, I'm logged out. Relatively straightforward. Um, I'll also go ahead and just replicate what I've done here, but I'll add a link to change password.php which we haven't created yet, uh, as I said, we'll get to, but we'll just fill up the navigation. Uh, it will sort of give us a to-do list, so change password. Keep that small p. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and just log in and make sure that's displaying properly. I can't see any reason why it wouldn't. Brilliant. Okay, so this will go to change password, which isn't found at the moment, and log out will log us out of our, our account. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and log out. We're going to create a new widget now, and this is going to show us, uh, like I said at the start of the tutorial, how many users are currently uh, registered. This doesn't include users that are logged in, uh, but you know we'll get to that at some point later on. So uh, let's go ahead and create a new file, uh, and I'm going to call this uh, user, uh, let's say userCount.php. So user underscore count.php. Uh, and this is going to take the same uh, structure as this widget. So essentially, I'm just going to copy this and paste it in here. So we've got the class, the outer class of widget, the header, and the inner div. And that's all we need. So we can remove everything in here. So this is the formation of our widget, our outer container, our header, and then our inner class or an inner container. So um, let's just go ahead and, and sort of create the skeleton of this widget. We'll go ahead and create what we want to say but we'll emit the actual value. Um, so I'm just going to say, um, uh, let's, I don't know what to call it. Uh, let's just say users. And I'll say we currently have X registered users. Okay, so X is uh, going to be replaced with uh, a value. Uh, we're essentially going to obtain a value uh, which will be a return value from a function. So we'll be using a function to return a specific value and we'll be echoing out this here. Remember user count is a widget included as part of our aside. So if I go over to aside now, uh, you'll see we've got aside if logged in equals true, then display our logged in widget, otherwise display login widget. So we, we already know about that. However, we're not including our um, our So we need to go ahead and include this file. Uh, so obviously we display this. So let's go ahead and do that just under here. And let's go ahead and include um, user count.php. Um, we'll obviously need to go, uh, it needs to be within the includes widget directory. So we've done that now. Uh, let's go ahead and refresh. And oh, okay. So let's check what might have gone wrong here. So includes. 
that is widgets that's fine refresh okay so now we have this widget users and we currently have X registered users so what we need to do now is go ahead and create the function that's going to return the user count so let's go ahead and do that now um, so uh, we need to open up our um, within our core directory within our functions we need to open up users um, this could go in general but um, I think it's probably better to better suited to users because uh, it deals with data uh, directly relating to users. So I'm going to say function user underscore count or you could say something like total users anything like that. Um, we're obviously going to be returning a value so we can do this all, all, all on one line so we can return a MySQL result. Uh, within here we obviously need to uh, supply a query and then the row that we want to retrieve this count from. Uh, so let's go ahead and say MySQL query and the second argument will just pass a zero. So within here we want to use the MySQL count function to return a uh, count based on the user ID field of all of the users. Now at the moment there's only one which is me so it will obviously return one but in a moment we'll go ahead and we'll uh, create another account uh, and you know, we'll see that this will change to two. So I want to select and we're using the MySQL count function and we're counting by user ID. We could count by like star or something, but it's probably always good to use a field. And we're obviously uh, fetching this from the users table. And uh, we need our condition in here now because we want to say where the active state is equal to one. We don't want any users with the active state equal to zero to be counted within this check. So I'm going to say where active equals one okay so um, that's it now uh, we're returning this number uh, so let's go ahead uh, and test this out so within my user count.php file I'm gonna go ahead and break into PHP where this X currently was or currently I've just replaced um, and I'm going to echo the result of the user count function so remember we're returning a value from this function we're not um, echoing it out so uh, echo user count and let's go ahead and refresh and you see we currently have one registered users now we've got this problem here where we've got users but we can uh, solve that in just a moment I hadn't planned on doing so but we can go ahead and do this okay so first of all let's go ahead and create another account and obviously see how this changes so I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit the insert tab uh, let's go ahead and create a new user account so I'm going to just choose the uh, name Billy we will apply the MD5 function to this password um, first name we'll say Billy and then we'll say Garrett email we'll just make up so Billy at phpacademy.org and active I'm gonna set to um, zero uh, let's go ahead and uh, submit this and when I refresh you see we have one registered users that's obviously you know what we the result we were expecting because we've got the active state for this user set to zero so let's go ahead and edit that and change that to one click go come back to our site and refresh and you see this changes to two now obviously the uh, the suffix on the end of this word the the users is uh, correct in this case because it's more than one uh, so what we want to do is we want to um, create a condition that that you know uh, allows us to um, allows us to either insert the Z, uh, S or not so um, you know this isn't entirely necessary it depends on how you're wording it but I'll, I'll go ahead and do this now so I'm going to say suffix equals and then in uh, brackets here is going to be my condition uh, after this is going to be um, a string otherwise another string so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, up here I'm going to create a variable called user count and this is going to be equal to the result of this function and that means we can use this variable in this condition to determine whether to put an S on the end and then we can just go ahead and echo out user count here so I'm gonna say if user underscore count doesn't equal uh, or uh, we could say doesn't equal one so if it doesn't equal one we can add an S on the end otherwise we just keep this as a blank string so uh, as far as that goes that's not really done anything because we're not actually doing anything with this suffix we're not outputting anything 
So I'm going to get rid of the S and I'm going to break into PHP. Remember with no space here because we just want it to uh, echo out. And I'm going to echo suffix. And it's as straightforward as that. When I refresh now, you see that we've still got the S on the end here. Um, and that's obviously to be expected. However, if I go ahead and I set this um, to zero, click go, come back and refresh, you see that this has changed to one and the S has disappeared. So this is a really neat, uh, not trick, but a really neat uh, method of, of detecting whether an S should be on the end of a, a word, okay? So um, in this part of the tutorial, we've dealt with the user count and more importantly, just added some links into our logged in um, include here. Uh, so um, in the next part, we're going to be dealing with something that's a lot more complex, but uh, if done in the correct way is going to, you know, uh, be a lot easier to maintain. And that is the registration page. And we're not going to do this as in, you know, static fields. We're going to do this uh, slightly more interestingly. So I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next part.